Welcome to this episode of Healthcare Self-Care Podcast. I am your host, Aloysius Ballard, and I am the digital coordinator here at Singer River Health System. And I have a special guest today. Won't you introduce yourself? What's up, Lo? My name is Dr. Tyler Sexton, and I have the esteemed privilege and honor of being the chair and medical director of Singer River Health System's pediatric program. Well, Dr. Sexton, I am so excited to have you here on the podcast today. Today, we're going to talk about an amazing subject, stressing kids. What do you think? <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. Uh, it is amazing because it's actually an undervalued topic. It's one that I think we, we don't appreciate. You know, we deal with stresses all in our lives as adults from making money, providing for the kids, uh, the, the social climate, uh, the political climate, whatever it is, and then our, our physical uh, ailments that produce psychological and emotional stresses as well. What we don't realize, or, and some of us do, in my own background of having cerebral palsy, um, having 16 surgeries, being told I never walk, talk, or even be a doctor here with you today, by the grace of God, there's a lot of stressors that these kids go through, whether it be bullying, whether it be issues in home and school. And so, you know, kids manifest stress a lot differently than adults. Uh, and I think that's what is exciting and what's fun to talk about because we can kind of address those things and, um, and be bold to talk about it. It is real. It's important to say, you know what, here we are, let's, let's talk about it, let's address it with our kids, but also how do, we, how do we attack it and how do we make a change and how do we make it fun at the same time? Now, let's, let's kind of rewind a second. Growing up, they said it was just being a child, but sometimes being a child is not just being a child. Sometimes it's a child dealing with stress. What is stress in your opinion? Sure. So, and that's a great thing. Stress is anything that the, it, it's unseen, but anything that the body manifests physical symptoms of. So anything that is going to, you know, um, I'm talking about emotional, psychological stress here. We'll talk about body stress for a minute, like viral and things like that. But a stressor can be anything that causes a psychosocial response uh, in the child. Um, and so what's amazing is it can be something as small as stubbing your toe or the anxiety associated with a, with a test, anything that creates some sort of physical uh, reaction to a uh, social stimulus. Now, you alluded to it being almost like a multi-layered onion, so to speak. Sure. What are some common stressors that you have come across in your profession? Sure. So when it comes to pediatrics, uh, a lot of that's going to be um, in, in the home, for one, is, is school. You know, we all have, for one, it's the, I want to tell everybody out here, just because we are talking, I love this platform, just being real and being candid, because we want kids to be successful, you know, but we put a lot of, we put a lot of focus on performance. You got to either, whether you want your kid to be the next Mike Tyson or Michael Jordan, yeah. you got to, you know, put in a bunch of practices, or I want you to be the next uh, Albert Einstein. And you got to have all A's or you're going to, you know, uh, uh, go in the closet for an hour. You know, I joke, but these are the things these kids are so, and some kids are just innately driven. There are three types of children the American Academy of Pediatrics kind of talks about. And one is an easy child, meaning no matter what happens, uh, they go with the flow, they pursue, and they just, no matter what happens to them, they're, they're chill, right? And then there's a slow to warm child, which means depending on what stressors, you know, they, they start off a little bit cold or things affect them, but then they can balance out and manage certain things like stressors or, or emotional kind of things. Then there's something called the difficult child. No matter what you do to them, whether you self-correct them with quality discipline in terms of, um, you know, reward system or takeaways, um, whether you um, admonish or you reward whatever you do, it's just it's it's a tough it's a tough child to navigate, and that also puts stressors on the parents because whatever type class your child is, therefore your response to stress or theirs is going to then, then dictate the parent's response, which will put even more stressors on the kids. So understanding your child and really being open and honest with them is, is first a key. Um, and you see a lot of it in schools and bullying right now in the society we're living in is a huge psychosocial stressor for these kids. Yeah. And I think for me, though, if I was being honest, <clears throat> like in my own life, you know, you talk about it you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have the all-time access. So when these kids got made fun of at home, I mean at school, they could go home and get support from their parents. Now on Facebook, they're getting made fun of them on Facebook, they're getting cyberbullied, and they're getting bullied at school. And then the truth of it is, in some situations, as sad as it is, sometimes their home life isn't as strong. And so they're getting the support at school or with their friends, but maybe not at home. So you got to realize these stressors can come at home. They can come at, you know, at school or other places as well. I want to be transparent because as a parent myself, over the last few years, I've noticed that my child, one of our children, has developed a lot of stress and anxiety. Sure. Uh, it was very new to us as parents because our oldest never had any signs of this. Um, our youngest, he started to develop where, like, he would vomit every day. 
before you went to school. Right. And we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what we, we were thinking it was something he was eating or maybe he wasn't getting enough rest. Um, but we come to find out that it was actually stressors. Um, that leads me to ask you about similar situations. Parents like myself, who we do everything we can, and sometimes it's still out of our, our, our control. Sure. How would you suggest we kind of a, approach those situations? Well, first and foremost, and that's a great thing, and I appreciate your candor. One is working with your pediatrician and actually asking those questions. Two, in children versus, I'm just going to talk about kids from like 12 and under for yeah. now. You know, children have a totally different manifestation of physical stress, how they, how they manifest it versus like young adults, right? So kids, what you just alluded to is classic. One of the number one physical manifestations of psychosocial stresses at first is vomiting or headaches, abdominal pains, chest pains. Um, you know, you can still see some of the nail biting and things like that that are classic, but a lot of times the physical manifestation when you first come and say, hey, my child every day has an abdominal pain and it notices when he talks about a math class or right before school, but then on the weekends or the summer, you're like, my kid's perfect. I don't have a problem with him. You're like, what's going on? That's a big tell. When you know that your child is perfect, but then all the time, and he's still a good, uh, he or she's a good student or a good kid or trying to be, right? Yes. But at school, they notice, man, they just always are, like I said, throwing up or having a headache and complaining. That is the number one um, indicator. You should say, you know what? Let me look at the physical possibility, but also I need to really be real and say, is this, could this be a manifestation of stress? And for example, since we're talking globally, there are great medications that do not change personalities, that are not um, addicting, that will change um, your your child's um you know, outlook and be able to manage the stress well. And it's not a crippling, and it's not something they have to have for the rest of their lives either. This is usually a three to six month period. And also we look at counseling. The other big thing is, is being able to come out and say, hey, let's talk about it as a family or with a counselor, right? If nightmares appear all of a sudden that are out of the blue, not just from watching a scary movie or something, but like if you had a child that really had no issues and all of a sudden now we're having a nightmare about forgetting to study for a class or, you know, I don't know, something like that, or bedwetting. You have a child that was completely potty trained and we're six, seven years old now, and now we're wetting the bed a lot more. That's a stress, and so that's a psychological thing you need to be looking at. Now, of course, UTIs and things like that could be, and you want to be, your doctor will check that, but we're talking about stress here. And that's definitely one, it's kind of a, in, in younger kids, it presents a little bit more oddly. So you touched on something, and I know this will bring you back for a, a, a deeper conversation on this. A lot of people, parents included, are a little nervous about getting into introducing medicine as a means of coping with children. You just mentioned that it, it, it's a safe process. Can you just speak to a little bit more to that? Absolutely. As it being a coping. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a tool. You can't build a house with just a hammer. You need tools. Right, And so with good counseling, good physical exercise, those kind of things, it's a tool. But when you add medication to the global multidisciplinary approach with your child, you can see dramatic differences. It's not a failure as a parent. That's the big thing now in this community or in this society we're living in. It's, oh, you should have done this better. You should have breastfeeded longer. You should have uh, you know, you saw this did or, or, or got this thing, whatever it is, right? And I, I jest, but I want to be real. I want people to hear my transparency too. I love this community. I love my kids. And I wouldn't do anything to my own children. I got a pair of two children myself that I wouldn't do to my kids that I take care of in my practice. And I know that all of our pediatricians at Singer Health System feel the same way. And we're family. We're, we're, we're uh, moms and dads, right? And I think that that is what I want you guys to realize, that it is a tool in your toolbox. And you would be silly not to at least explore a tool that's there and say, wow, some of you guys may be indifferent, right? I, I liken it to this. I'm a new uh, woodsman. I, I got into woodworking and things like that, and I got me a new planer, for example, and the way that cuts through wood, I had no idea that tool even existed, but when I used that tool, it changed my life, right? Wow. And I want people to realize if you, would, if you would use a tool that you may not know, talk to your doctor. Talk to us and say, what does this look like? But when you use that tool, it's going to change your life, and it will impact these kids. And in the long and short of it, we all want what's best for our children, and sometimes adding medication may be that. Now, I love, oh man, that was such a great example. I want to speak to some ways that we can use tools that we already have or may be discovering to help alleviate stress in our kids. Sure. The big one there is, for one, is just communication, right? Finding a way when you notice stress or you notice, like, say, say school is a, is a trigger or say you do have a certain bully or a classroom. The big one, first of all, is demystifying the conversation being open and, and upfront about it for one. And then the second would be finding outlets. 
whether you're doing something fun. Because the big thing is, is bottling it all up and say, we'll talk about it tomorrow or whatever else. you got to find an, an, an exit, a release. Whether it's something as silly as going to play basketball, that's not silly. Or spending time with your child to open them up and, and soften the area. Because when you spend time and you're just loving the time together and spending time together, it'll open up conversation and it'd be more casual. It's always easier to bring up a casual conversation than to point blank, what happened at school? A teacher told me you did this, or they told me you did this, or Johnny's parents called and said, you did this. You know, a more organic conversation is you can start seeing the red flags that we talked about. By able to, to engage your children in a more uh, organic way, you're going to be able to really touch on that. And the big one is um, finding physical outlets. You know what I mean? We're all guilty of this, right? Um, I love our video games too, but our kids shouldn't be spending more than two hours in front of the TV you know, a day, at least an hour a day out there really getting active, letting their blood pressure and, and their heart rate really getting up and, and moving. We don't do that. And I know, you know, I'm guilty of it too, and I try to be. And I think if you're looking at smaller, and it's a baby steps. So you don't have to do it all right off the bat. But when you do that with these kids, you're going to see a dramatic difference, and then that's going to open up. One, it's going to decrease stress on them, but also open up your communication. Wow. You're right. Uh, I think a lot of us, we work so much, we go, we have all these other things that uh, hinder us from just, le- you know, jumping out and, and doing these walks or you exactly. know, shooting a game of basketball, just being outside, something unplugging. Um, you know, what would you say to the people who, who just say, like, how do I really find the time? Well, I would say this, um, that it, it's... I get it, part of it, you know, we're all human. Uh, but being a pediatrician didn't make me a better father. Being a father makes me a better pediatrician. And I think that that for me, it's a reframing. I think that we, I, I admire um, the hardworking parents out there that are trying to make ends meet. Um, you know, I've been there, as, as like I said, having cerebral palsy, being told I'd never do this. I had to be the first one at up and the last one to leave to prove my worth. Yeah. I know how it is working. You may not, may or may not believe this, but three or four jobs to get through residency. I, I get it. I, that's why I love these parents because I see you, I know how you feel and mean it. But I do think that it's a prioritization. And I think that that is where we've, we've missed. We get so bombarded uh, just being us talking globally with the world today. We're too busy thinking about what's happening over, over, overseas or with COVID or anything else. We're forgetting the blessings in our own home. And I think if you really downplay, remember, it's, you have to walk the rocks to see the mountain views. It's not A to Z, it's A to B. And I think I encourage people to take that step one day at a time. And you'll notice that every day you'll turn your stumbling blocks into stepping stones. And that's what I tell these parents. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to be a parent of the year. We're going to screw up. We're human. But by recognizing, you know what? I also, too, parents need to recognize that I struggle with anxiety. It's me. You know, some fears and some anxieties are learned. And, and you don't mean to even. Yeah. And so by able to recognize, you know what, that might be me. Let me talk about it. Just recognize that stuff. See, you know what, let me, let me see. And then coming together means, you know what, we can come together as a family and, and make some positive changes. And I think that's a big one, too. I want to shift a little bit so that we can get to know you a little bit more. Uh, if you're listening at this point, you know that you've referenced your family. So let's give your family a shout out. Go ahead and... So, yeah, so I have a beautiful wife uh, named Laura. She is actually a pediatric ICU doctor at Jackson's uh, Women, um, Children's Hospital, Batson's Children. Uh, I have a daughter who's six years old, Harper Grace. And then I have um, a little fat 15-month-old uh, named Luke Sexton. He is, uh, he's a blessing, and I'll tell you, uh, we didn't expect to have a second one, and um, it's just been it's just been awesome. And so, yeah, they're my uh, they're my whole reason for doing it, and it's been a real blessing. So. I love family, Doc. Now I'm gonna give you a couple questions. I'm just fire oh, off. Me. I don't want I don't want you to have to overthink them. Just whichever comes to mind. All right. And we're gonna play a little game called This or That. Okay. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Oh, early bird. All right. Uh, city or country? Country. <laughs> Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Uh, let's see, coffee or tea? Sweet tea, in the vein. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you rather camp out or have a hotel? A hotel. Didn't see that one coming. No, I know, you know, I, I don't mind the I, the refinements if I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you had to pick one superhero from Marvel to be, who would it be? Oh, man, so Marvel. So I'm non-discriminatory. I like DC and Marvel both, but if it was Marvel, it'd be, it'd be Spider-Man. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I agree. Um, what is the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched was Spider-Man Homecoming. How did you like it? It's the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> it's top 10 for me. Now, this one is one that uh, our audience loves. 
to to argue over. Oh yeah, dog or cat? Oh dog. I mean, it, I mean, you guys know at my feet's my service dog. I mean, listen, I'm gonna make people mad out there, but you know I love you. When you have a service cat, a true service cat, I'll renounce all my bad things that I ever think about a cat. You don't see a cat wanting to serve somebody. They're not gonna go fetch a stick or go. You know, they're gonna look at you and say, "Hey, about time you get home to feed me." You know what I mean? They're not gonna come up and, and, and visit you. Uh, actually, I have a nurse practitioner who has a cat that acts like a dog. But so there are a few out there, you cat lovers, that, that have those dog qualities. But let's be honest, the dog's all the way. Hey, Doc, I'm going to get you out of here before you get uh, <laughs> in, in trouble, in a, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is the part of the show where you can spotlight anything you want to uh, spotlight. And then you can tell our audience how to get in touch with you. Well, guys, I, I want to tell you guys how much it has been a privilege to impact the Gulf Coast. Um, just it's been the greatest honor of my life. I want you guys to know that. I want uh, Singing River Pediatrics to be more than words. We are about impacting people. Uh, you know, my life with writing the two books, the God bless his little legs, no such thing as can't. We want you to know, especially the special needs population, we're here and we want you to we want you to be here with us. And so um, to get in touch with me or anything you guys need, uh, you can call our office. Um, and we're of course on the third floor of Pascagoula and I bounce around the different hospitals, but 228-809-5419. We'll be happy to serve you when we can. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Healthcare is Self-Care sponsored by Singing River Health System.